All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. It is Sunday coaching day and we're doing something special today. So let me kind of explain the order of events today. I'm going to get all my little windows up so I can see everyone. So I've got my chat going. Let me see my participants. Look for my coach. So today is going to be coaching with Corinne. So if you're a member of NoBS, and this call is a little special because we have invited members and for the first time ever, I would like to welcome the public. <laughs> you're going to see what we freaking do on a Sunday with me. Uh, it's it's just, we call it Sunday church. Uh, you know, people are coming in and out, going to church. Uh, some people, this is like, their version of getting their mind right for the week, that kind of stuff. So sometimes I cry, sometimes I yell, sometimes I'm just right there with you. We do it all. So uh, we are going to call up a couple people and I'm going to coach them, which means they're going to talk about what's going on in their weight loss life right now. And through coaching, what we do is I help them see how to solve a current problem that they're running into. So everybody in NoBS does the same thing. We all do the four basics. And the purpose of the four basics is to help you see like all the obstacles traditional diets never highlight. Normally when you start a diet, here's what happens. I get my plan and all they do is tell me what to do. And I go into the wild and I do my plan and my life is just happening everywhere. Everything I've been told is running through my mind. People's opinions are coming at me left and right about what I should and shouldn't do. My schedule gets filled. Somebody will take me to lunch and it was unexpected. The problems of your life happen whether or not you're on a diet or not. Most diets, they're just like throwing you butt ass naked, freezing ass cold into the world and saying, now whatever you do, don't break your diet. You better have some willpower. You better be strong and don't get fucked up. We're very different. The way that we do it is we throw you into the wild with four basics and we say, now come back to us with what's not working because there's usually an emotional thing going on for us. We're usually thinking something that gets us off. Maybe we're, we people please too much and we have to unlearn how to do that to lose weight. Maybe we say yes to too many things. We overfill our schedule to feel important in life. And that pushes our weight loss to the side. We have to learn how to feel important without accomplishing things all the time. So we have to unlearn that behavior. I promise you, all of you, whether you are a current OBS woman or not, the only thing standing in your way between losing weight and keeping it off it's going to be a series of things that you think not something's wrong with you. You got bad genes. You just too damn old. None of that is the real problem. The real problem is no one's really taught you how to take a look at your food and your life together. How have you mashed them together? And what can we do to pull them apart a little bit so that you can deal with your life without food? That's the simple part. And that is the big key missing in most diets. So on Sundays, here's how we do it. We do two hours with Corinne every Sunday. You do not have to stay for all two hours to lose weight. Everything that we do gets put into the replays. So you can watch it later. You can put it on your damn phone and listen to it in your car over the course of a week, 10 minutes at a time. I don't, and I'm Southern. I'm sure that's not a shock to no fucking body in the room. But if you put me on two times speed, you can listen to me in an hour and you can still hear me just fine. And when I listen to me, I am definitely on two times speed. Okay, let's go with Deanna. You're going to be up first, hon. Amy says, "This I've been here four years and this is my fourth live I've ever attended. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could be here, Amy. But that just shows you so many people don't come live. Most of our members, we have like 13,000 of you and like about six to 700 a week come live. So there you go. All right, Deanna, tell me all the things. What are we coaching on today? 
I am so excited to be here. Thank you. You're <laughs> um, so your background's beautiful. You're like decked out for fall. I am already <laughs> two weeks ago. I'm like one of those people. <laughs> yeah, me too. I went yesterday to the Bath and Body Works because they had the fall is here 40% off. Yes. And my house is now smelling like a giant pumpkin. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> there you go. Um, so I lost 90 pounds with no BS. Yeah. Um, and it's been amazing. Um, I'm really having some issues with my thoughts in terms of getting to my goal. Okay. Um, so I've, I've been kind of gaining and losing the same five pounds over and over. Um, and I genuinely believe I can't do it. Like I keep having these thoughts come up of like, I can't do it. It's going to be hard. I'm never going to get to my goal. Um, which is very close. I only have about 10 to 15 pounds to get to my goal. Um, right. so let's just say we have 10, let's just say 10. And then after you lose 10, mm -hmm. let's reevaluate see if you want to lose the last five. Okay. Usually when you get to about this point, I will just say for everyone, when you lose a lot of weight, um, and I, I kind of did this myself, I just kind of started making smaller chunk increments. Number one, that just helped me get there when I was breaking it down into small chunks, because I, I was for me, and I don't know about you, Deanna, I was in uncharted territory. Yes. <laughs> I'd never been that thing. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to want to weigh, you know? And so I just kept kind of like when I, for a long time, I had, I went from 250 and every time I would hit 175, I would gain back. So like I had this big belief, like there's no way I'll ever weigh less than 175. That's my sweet spot. I think Oprah took, introduced the set point and all that junk. And then this time I was like, I think I might be able to get lower. So I just kind of left it to the ethos that I was going to go lower and just see what would happen. So it's very normal. I think when you're getting this close to where your brain wants to freak out about it. So I don't really want to change the thoughts of like, um, it's going to be hard. I'll never get there. What I'd like to do is allow you to have them mm -hmm. and have other thoughts along with them. Okay. okay. Just, let me just ask you on a scale of one to four, one being I don't believe it at all. And for being, no, I'm just telling you from the book of Quran, it says thou shalt not lose any more weight. <laughs> what do you believe when I say, uh, oh, like, you know, you're for sure going to lose all of it. I, I genuinely don't believe it because I think I'm at, I'm exactly at the point where you described, I started at 260 and mm -hmm. now I'm I'm wavering between 175 and 180, and this is totally uncharted territory for me. I never thought it would ever be this small. So it's just, I don't know. I really want to get to Century Club. That's like what I write on my why every, every day okay. in my planner. Um, but I just, I have such a resistance to believing that, that I can do it. And then I, but I, feel I like think the resist, let me ask you this. If you didn't think it was going to be hard, would you have a hard, would, would you be having so much resistance to, I think I might be able to get to Century Club? Yeah, I think if I had the thought that it's going to be easy or easier, then I wouldn't have as much resistance. Okay. I don't think we need to go with it's going to be easy. Because let me just ask you this. When I say it's going to be easy to lose these last 10, I'm sure your brain is like, sounds good. Um, okay. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we don't want to jump to, it's going to be hard because this is what I think is happening. It's going to be hard is what you really believe. And if you believe it's going to be really hard, then it's almost impossible to believe that you could get there no matter how much you want it. So I think we, what we need to do is we have to figure out how do we stop believing it's going to be hard and start believing it might be less hard than I'm currently thinking or believing something. Let me ask you this. How does this thought feel? There's probably things I can do that aren't as hard as I imagine. That feels a lot better. <laughs> like, tell me like legit, how does it feel? Like, where do you feel it in your body? Like when, when I say that, like what happens in your body? I just feel a lot lighter. Like okay. I feel like a weight being lifted off when you say that. And I know like, logically, I know that that is true um, mm -hmm. because okay, like- So that's good. We want, that means you also irrationally believe it too. 
Anytime yeah. our logical brain believes something, that means a small part of our irrational side believes it too. Correct. Yes. <laughs> and okay. I, I do, I do know like, and, and I have the data to prove I, you know, I haven't been following my plans. Like I was at like 30 or 40% the last few months and literally the last three days I followed my plan and I stopped at enough and didn't do the nighttime eating that I have been doing. And I'm down three pounds in like five days. Okay. So like, so we I, know we, we know we can lose weight. Yeah. Now let me ask you about the last three days on a scale of one to four, one being, um, it was excruciating and for being, this is the easiest thing I've ever done. What would you call the plan for the last three days? Uh, like, like, like doing what you did. Three. It was, it oh. wasn't, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't hard. So I, it's absolutely true that to lose the last 10 to 15 pounds might not be as hard as you've been telling yourself. Yeah, I think where the disconnect is happening is, and I've heard you talk about this before, when I was first losing, I could kind of, I don't want to use the term get away with, but I could get away with like off plan eats and, you know, eating, you know, more than I, you know, more than enough. Um, not all the time, but I think now that I'm so close to my goal and I'm having the thoughts of like, that's probably not going to fly as much in order well, to I think you can have off plan eats mm -hmm. I think it has let me ask you this because I have off plan eats all the time but I mean we're you know I don't know what did, when did I lose my weight somebody do math I lost all my weight in 2007 that was when it all ended same year I started my business and what is that to 2023 tell me how long I've had my weight off 16 years in 16 years, how many off plan eats do you think I've had? Probably a lot. <laughs> In this last week, how many do you think I've had? I, I always think like, I bet Corinne doesn't do off plan eats. Oh, <laughs> let me tell you what happened last night. And let me just tell you, I've lost some of my summer weight. You know how I always gain my weight in the summer? Yes. I'm, I'm back down. Mm -hmm. And last, you know, I own a sports bar. Mm -hmm. And we had to test. I saw the new nachos that are coming out on the I menu saw. next weekend. I literally sat there for two hours testing nachos of all kinds. Yeah. It was not on my plan. You know why? The kitchen didn't get the all the ingredients until like Thursday and I'd made my plan for the week. And I just had to pivot. I just had to go in smart. I was just like, well, this isn't a free for all. Yeah. And let me just give you another super secret. Literally on the one day that I'm breaking my plan and testing nachos, a motherfucking no BS woman had traveled in from like across country or something, Pittsburgh maybe, and was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you too can get called out no matter where you are in no BS. I can't wait no. to try your nachos, by the way. I came to your bar for the, the business um, workshop and it was amazing. Yes. So. <laughs> oh, well, and they were all pretty good. So some of them made the Korean cut. Some of them yeah. didn't. <laughs> to say. But let me say, like, I think you think that you can't. It's when you eat off plan, tell, describe to me what happens. I have that perfectionist mindset because in the beginning, I followed my plan a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and well, yeah, I did, but I. I think I, I think when I don't follow the plan, okay, well now that's, you know, I can't fill it in on my habit tracker. So fuck it. And then I just, I think I engage in more off plan eating. Oh, and so you could eat off plan if you didn't follow it with a fuck it eat correct, and lose 10 pounds. Yeah. So the problem isn't that like, can't, you know, I'm going to have to be perfect. It's like, no, you can't afford to fuck it eat if you're not perfect. Just like all the way down the scale. Yeah. Nothing's changed, Deanna. The next, like, shocker alert, as I tell everybody every single time, what you do the first 10 is the same shit you're going to do in the last 10. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to break your plan sometimes. And then you're going to have to talk to yourself like a nice person, not like a, like, mm, you're not perfect. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's true. And I, and I do want to give credit to the part of me that does talk to myself in a nice way compared to like, before I started no BS, I was a hot mess. And now like I, <laughs> true, I, I truly was, but we all now, were including yeah. myself. <laughs> you know, now I've, I've, I do a lot of pivoting with not only my thoughts, but my actions. Like I've been doing a lot of um, overeating at night because I, I own my own business and I work later because I work with kids. So I said to myself, okay, this week I'm going to pack my dinner and eat it at work because I know that way when I get home, I'm not going to be starving. So I, I do want to give credit to that part of myself that has really just been able to pivot and not like be super dramatic about it. Well, um, let me tell you the other good thing about that version of you. Mm -hmm. That version of you said, I notice the one that's at work and stuff is stressed and tired and she's dealing with shit and like, you know, being around kids to me is exhausting. God love you for having that as a job. But it's <laughs> like you recognized that version of me needs taken care of because I know her. Like this is the way that I think all of us need to think when we're making our plan, we want to protect the version of us that's exhausted and tired mm -hmm. and she's going to want to eat anything and everything. Or if she doesn't do it right, she's so mentally drained or she's so at the point to where she's just like, let me throw it away. I'll start over tomorrow. Like she has high hopes for the next day or that version of me is a perfectionist and whatever. And you're preparing for her. You're saying like, I have your back. I don't need, I'm not setting you up anymore to have to make so many tough decisions. Yes. I think that's extremely true. And I think going into making my plans from here on until I lose my weight. And even after I lose my weight and reach my goal, cause I know I will, um, I need to really focus on planning for that version of myself. I am, but I think I need to just really be sure that I'm keeping that version of myself in mind. Totally. And then for her, because your tendency is perfectionism. Mm -hmm. We need to have a backup plan. It's like, okay, girl, now I'm going to bring some food and stuff. But in those moments, whenever it happens in your life and you decide you don't want to follow your plan, what do you like now? What do we want it? Because the literally Deanna, I think the on, the on or off plan is not what's going to stop you from getting to your goal. And I think you need to realize that because in the very beginning, your thought that helped you lose 90 pounds was I can be off plan and be okay, which probably meant that when you were off plan, you didn't fuck it eat. Yeah. Then you decided like there was a number you hit and you heard one sentence from me somewhere and you're like, I can't be off plan. I don't have wiggle room. And you turned up the pressure and you changed the dynamic and you reintroduced fuck it eating on the backside. Mm -hmm. That thought is causing the fuck it eating. Yep. And I want you to really think about this and then you can tell me how it truly feels. Cause if it doesn't feel right, we're not going to keep it. My last 10 pounds might have some off plan eats and that's okay. Because now I'm working on not fuck it eating, which was always the real problem. Yes. And that feels super centering. And it also has kind of narrowed my focus. Like my focus is overeating and fuck it eating. And I'm, I'm going to take the pressure off of sticking to the plan and know that I know when enough is I do I that's like one of the things that changed my life is like understanding enough um so it feels very centering and now I feel like I have a plan versus before I was kind of like you know kind of swirling like well I don't know what to do and is it like you know all these crazy thoughts that we get um so that feels really good it really does all yeah. right I love the word centering yeah easiest way to lose weight is to feel centered yes <laughs> <laughs> Not scared to death. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. It's good seeing thank your you. face. Thank you. You too. I'll see you at camp. I'm so excited. Me too. I like, and I wrote the content like a, a few months ago and I'm just like, and I'm live teaching this one. Oh, There's only like three videos 
the rest that, cause you know how, like we like to play a video and then we do live coaching and we do everything this time. I'm literally live teaching. Just, it's just going to be me railing for three straight days. Pretty I much. can't wait. That's what we all love. We love. All that. right. <laughs> we'll be ready for the rails. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Bye Corinne. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, changed attendee. I'm going to go ahead and start bringing up Susie. I want to say something for everyone, especially our current members. What I really want you to hear here about the plan, your plan, like, yes, we want to follow it, but this is the important parts of the plan. Number one, we're planning for the version of us that's going to show up to the meal. Let me say it again. When you make your 24 hour plan, we are planning for the version of us that's going to show up to the meal. That helps you make it very doable and very realistic. Number two, it's great if we follow the plan, but we all need to have a relationship with ourselves that says, if I don't follow the plan, I do not beat myself up. I do not green light myself into eating more because I fucked up and I for damn sure don't beat myself up so that I just throw my face down in anything and everything that's not nailed down because I'm bad. That can't happen. But I want all of you to be thinking about when you are making your plans, if you're routinely breaking them, like my habit is to break them, I want you to get back to, am I actually planning for the version of me who's going to sit down and eat this? Am I making her life easier or am I putting her in a really tough position? Because most of you are like, when we are routinely breaking our plans, that's usually a signal. It doesn't mean it has to be this way, but sometimes it's a signal that we're planning from the idea of this is what we should be eating. Good girls eat this way. When I'm good, this is what I would be doing. If I'm being healthy, this is what I would eat. We plan from a version of us that's been taught to us by shitty diets, uh, crazy ass magazine articles we've read all of our life. The diet Oprah was on four years ago. Like, think about where all of your influences around those rules have come from. And a lot of them are wrong. And a lot of you, like if you're over 55, I'm just gonna tell you right now, give me up an emoji Use the reactions button if you're over 55. Because if you're over 55, you have got a lot of diet rules in your head that science has shit on that you haven't researched. <laughs> you're still hanging on to Snackwell mentality, Jane Fonda mentality, Susan Powder mentality, the first time Oprah rolled out the the wagon of fat mentality, the 90s heroin chic mentality. And all of that has been proven to be junk fucking science. And yet you're like, this is what a hell. Toscarino, remember the early 2000s? Clean eating, even that's been debunked. So we want to like start unwinding that and one of the signals that you might be hanging on to shit you shouldn't be doing is i'm tracking my my planning i'm breaking it an awful lot i might be trying to eat how i think i should based on a lot of things i've learned over my life that may or may not even be true anymore and when i plan for that i'm leaving the lonely version of me at night the overwhelmed, tired version of me at night, the fucking bored version of me at night, the stressed out version of me at night, the hormonal version of me at night, I'm leaving her out in the cold. She's like naked and afraid with her meal plan. And nobody wants that. Okay. Uh, I can't read. I took my glasses off. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Susie. <laughs> you know that once I take the glasses off, letters are, bl are just blurs. <laughs> What are we coaching on, Susie? Well, good morning, Corinne. So what we're coaching on, what I wrote in about is 
I've been really rolling along, losing weight. It's been going great. I'm How much? Plans. I've lost 30 pounds. Okay. 30 pounds. Great. All right. I lost 10 in July after you coached me. <laughs> oh, would yeah. you say that my coaching is valuable then? <laughs> yes, it's very valuable. So I'm like, I'm stuck. God, please help well, me. Well, here comes yeah. another 10 then. Toot, toot. <laughs> yes. So, um, what I'm struggling with is I have been making my plans, assessing, I'm doing all of the four basics, except for, I think I'm not really stopping at enough. Okay. And I'm struggling with that because I just recently lost my job at the beginning, at the end of August. Okay. And that is like just a major blow to my self-esteem. So I know I'm eating because I feel like shit. Probably. And yeah. I'd like to figure out. So wait, let me ask you this. Do you feel confident that you still know what enough is? Cause I always yeah. like to like try to parse things out. Cause you probably yeah, do. Because... If you lost 10 pounds in July, <clears throat> probably you're very in tune with enough is yeah. and it's more the emotional side. Cause it can yeah. either be like, I don't legit know my enough signals or it can be, Oh, I know them. I know them. I just lie to myself about them in the moment. Okay. Well, I don't know if you're lying. You're probably, <laughs> I want you to think about this. When you say in the moment, I lie to myself, how does that feel? Well, not great. Right. Not great. Exactly. Which means we're not going to want to see the truth of what we're telling ourselves, like what's underneath it. Right. Nobody wants to like examine the things they don't feel great about in their life. Like we want to run from that. But yeah. if I was to say this past month, your brain has probably been prioritizing, um, feeling like scared or hurt or whatever's going on with losing your job. And at night or when it, well, I don't know if it's at night, but when I'm eating, it's prioritizing my emotions right now. And so it's telling me things so that I can feel better. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels better. It feels <laughs> nurturing, right? Yeah. <laughs> the reason yeah. why I want to say that is because I think too often, and I get it, I'm a hard ass. I think a lot of you like hear me all the time railing and stuff like that. There is times to be a hard ass on ourselves. And then there are times, like in this case, I don't want your brain to be your enemy. I want it, I, like, especially when you've lost your job, I want your brain, I want you to see it as, it's just been trying to protect me. It thinks food's that. And maybe I need to tell my brain it doesn't have to protect me anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> when it's, um, are you overeating every meal or are you just overeating at certain meals? Like when does, when do we have like a, do we have a pattern basically? Yeah, I think, well, we have a pattern of, um, like I'm going through the process of trying to find a new job. Okay. And like, it's on days where shit doesn't go right. Okay. So on the days when, um, like when you say shit doesn't go right, what does that mean? It means like, maybe I heard back from a company that they're, you know, not moving forward in the process for me or, um, well, let's just take that. So, okay. because that's probably going to happen a lot yeah. until you find the right job, right? Yes. I mean, it takes, you know, a lot of rejection to get the right job. Yeah. Okay. So when someone says we're not moving forward in the process with you or like you didn't get it, whatever that yeah. is, what do you internalize that to me? Oh, well, I'm not good enough. Someone else is better than me, obviously. Then it just like spirals from there. Like, well, I'm never going to find a job, okay. <laughs> which I know isn't true. You know, it's not true. I know it's not true that I'm okay. never going to find a job. I All mean, right. then that's, that's this is what I would do in that situation. The So we've got two problems to solve, one of which is already solved. The first one we're going to work on, which is, We've got to have a better reaction to rejection because odds are 
I mean, I, I read an article the other day or something. It's like in order to find a job, most people have to go through like 100 to 150 rejections. Like, and I think most wow. of us think like, I'm going to send out like 10 resumes and probably get a job or, you know, something along those lines. I don't think sometimes we realize the, the and, it's, and I don't know what kind of job you're looking for. Um, I'm in sales. So, yeah. So like, that's probably on the end of a hundred to 150 yeah. like tech and anything yeah. like now, if you were just, if you needed to be a server, you right. could probably go and apply at three restaurants and have a job by the end of the week. You know, you wouldn't have to go through the crucible of rejection. And let me just tell all of you, I love me some servers. I was a server for a long time and I trained the servers at our restaurant. <laughs> so <laughs> y'all don't take that as shade. Us restaurant owners, we love our servers. <laughs> so, but when you are trying to get into a job that like, you know, has a higher skill set and stuff, you're going to be competing. And the truth is sometimes there's going to be people out there who are better, a better fit. Like I want you to think, try this on. What sounds better? They found someone who's a better fit or they found someone who's better than me. Well, they found someone who's a better fit certainly sounds better. Yeah. And is it true? Yes. Because the truth is when you're looking for a job, you have no clue all of the characteristics they're looking for. Right. It's just like when, you know, we usually have 80 plus coaches apply every single time we have an opening and we pick one. Yeah. And that is not like, we don't sit there and be like, oh my God. 79 of them are like, she's so much better than the rest. Yeah. Normally it's like, we have lots that are going to be a pretty good fit. And then as we like narrow it down, like we have crazy criteria. <clears throat> Sometimes the difference between someone who gets a job and who doesn't has everything to do with like, well, um, she has better lighting. And we know she's going to be on camera. And so she came to the interviews with better lighting. Like we really liked this person. Like they were kind of equal and all this, but you know, if she's going to have better lighting. The members will just like it better. We're a go. That like, could you imagine if the other coach was like, she's so much better than me. Something's wrong with me. And it was something innocuous. So the reason why I say all this, Susie it's because you get to decide what the rejection is going to mean. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I want you to allow your brain to have its normal default thought, which is they're, I'm not good enough. They're better than me. And I want you to add. And I'm like, I always think that that's my knee jerk reaction. But let me take a few breaths and let me think through how I want to think, because the goal is to get a job. And it's like, I've got to stay in positive energy mm -hmm. and I need to stay focused or it's going to be a miserable grind. And I gain 10 pounds over it because right. you have a choice. You can get a job losing weight or you can get a job gaining weight because you already said for sure I'm getting a job. Well, for sure, I'm going to be employed. <laughs> I don't and know it, if like, I... you're going to clock in one day, like you're going to show up for orientation, whatever, whatever happens in the land of sales, you're going to show up and you're either going to show up as someone who always believed they'd get one because they are good enough because they will be a good fit for someone mm -hmm. continuing their weight loss journey, or you'll show up that day who someone who really struggled to believe and ate their way to get there. But yeah. either way, you can get there. Like we're not taking away that part. We're just trying to solve this enough issue. Right. Because <clears throat> I want you to just see when you don't believe you're good enough, you suddenly don't eat to enough. You're yeah. filling that hole. <laughs> I am filling that hole. And I think part of it is I'm a little conflicted. Like, I am looking for a job, but I'm not even sure I want one. Like part of me wants to just start my own business. And that's super scary. Well, so. let me say this. I want you to keep looking. Here's when you can start your business. 
this is just a business owner's, I'm just giving you some free advice here. Yay. <laughs> you are not ready to start your own business. Okay. If you can't take rejection, when you put in a resume at a company, how the fuck are you going to take rejection building your own business? Because you're going to face, multiply the rejection you're getting right now by about a thousand. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's full of it. Yeah. It's in, <laughs> it's full of it in sales too. And like, it doesn't bother me in that scenario because it doesn't feel as personal to me. It's because you're not making it personal. What do you think when somebody rejects you, when you, when you have a job, what do you think? Next. Okay. Why are we not just saying, all right, next? Because all you're doing when you're going and looking for a job is selling yourself. Right. That is true. That is, and let me just say, I can see why you believe you're going to get a job because you're highly skilled. If the only thing it takes to get a job is to sell <laughs> yourself, you're a baller salesperson. But I will just tell you, let's go to the moment when you're going to want to eat past enough. Because right. it's not the, you know, your excuses. Like you're like, I lie to myself. We already know <laughs> your brain's just trying to protect you because you're spending time feeling sorry for yourself. Yes, I am. Okay. So in the moment when you want to eat more and your brain is like, we should eat a little more, blah, 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 blah. Try this thought on. The only reason why I want to eat more is because I'm feeling like I'm getting rejected. I'm trying to find a job. It's tough. But I can stop eating because I know I will get a job. Yeah. It's just hard to get rejected. And I'm working on that. Yes. What do you think about that at night when you're eating? You know, it's not really at night. Like I'm when, not, whenever it is, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think I'm I always assume really, everybody's eating at night. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not really a snacker. So it's definitely like at meal time. And yeah, I have all kinds of excuses. I tell myself like, Maybe I haven't eaten all day and it's dinner. And I'm like, oh, well, this, I mean, how much is enough? Like, <laughs> I haven't eaten all day because I know my stomach just got bigger because I skipped a meal. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> well, but that's okay. Like, we don't want to get rid of these. Like, this is the thing for everyone to hear, especially for all of you that came to camp when we went to, did you do No BS Excuses Camp? Yes. Okay. Remember I said, I don't know what, 40 2000 times over the course of three days, <laughs> we're not getting rid of the excuses, right? We're, we want to hear them and we're not going to say, yeah. but I keep thinking it's like, yeah, now you need to think like, I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. I'm prepared. Like, it's the same as like, when we make our plan, we're preparing for that. Like, I want you to prepare for the version of Susie who's eating a meal, who's going to hear excuses only because right now she's doing something really hard and uncomfortable and it's not the weight loss part, right? She's selling herself. She's learning how to not make rejection personal. She's figuring out, does she <clears throat> want to do her own thing or look for a job? Even though I've already told you, don't start the business yet. I think yep. it's, if you can switch over to getting rejected, to where you like, this is how you'll know you'll be really ready. Okay. Is if you feel rejected over and over again and you move on quickly from it and you stop eating over it. Right. If that's the case, you're ready to start your business. Starting a business for all of you. Y'all know I have a business membership and I, this is what I coach all day, every day over there. It is full of self rejection, public right. rejection being ignorant as fuck about what to do every day. Because when you're building from the ground up that first year, there's so many things you have to learn for the first time. It's like, it puts us back in kindergarten. We just feel right. dumb as a rock all the time. And if, if just getting rejected from a company is already emotionally taxing, let's wait until we've got our emotional resiliency built. So right. you can withstand that. 
Yeah. Okay. That's good advice. Yeah, I just I don't want to see you extra miserable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what are we doing? Say it again. Tell me what you're going to be doing. What I'm going to be doing is, um, you know, in the moments when I want to overeat because I've not had a good day, I, you know, I'm just going to be kind to myself and just acknowledge that this is difficult, but I'm going to be okay and I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to find a job or do something. And we're not going to argue with our excuses. Right. We're not gonna belittle them. <clears throat> And be like, I knew you were coming. That's yeah. the nice thing about when you're inside an OBS is I drill into y'all your excuses. Uh -huh. like, once we start highlighting them, you can't unhear them anymore. You're just like, oh my right. God. Then we have to like, awareness is always the first step to fixing something. But y'all want to move like, well, I'm aware. When does this end? <laughs> I don't think it's going to end. Yeah. We got to just move to step two, which is awareness. I hear it. And now I say, I knew you were coming. I've right. prepared for you. Like I can, like all of you, I was taught, I was actually, I created a blog a post about this last night. We all do things in the face of excuses all the time. Like I am pretty sure every day, if I had to guess you wake up and there's these few moments where you're just like, fuck, I don't want to send out another resume. Like, ugh, I just don't want to do this today. And then you do it. Yes. It's the same thing that what happens when we get to that enough. It's like, well, your brain is like, oh, you should eat extra, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, I knew I'd think that. But, you know, like, I'm not going to gain weight over losing my job. I'm not going to gain weight over finding a job. Right. I'm going to go into the next job. <clears throat> With all of that on lock, like that's what we're doing. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you. It's good seeing your face too. Another familiar yep. face. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Right. Good Chris. luck in your job search too. Thank you. All righty. All righty. Bye. Bye. Okay. So we're going to switch gears for a hot second. It's like 20 minutes. It'll take us about to the top of the hour. Then we're going to coach the other three people. I'm going to share thy screen. And we are going to talk about no BS and feel free. Our members are over here in the chat. They will tell you how they feel. Like I have always believed one of the best ways to know if no BS is right for you is fucking talk to some of the people. That's why like I always try, like sometimes we encourage our members to like be on my social posts, like in the chats and stuff, like in the comments and stuff. Because I like, even when, if um. We have events inside of No BS. We have two a year and we have one coming up in November. It's a camp all about learning how to take what you think, write about it and shrink your ass. That's the whole thing about the weekend. And I always tell our members, look, if you're wondering if you should be there, is it good? Do you learn something? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, ask the fucking members. They're the ones that come because I promise everybody who is listening to the sound of my voice, if my shit ever gets bad, I will be the first person to quit offering it to you. My mission is to teach every woman how to lose her weight for good and feel amazing as she deserves. My mission is not to sell as many weight loss spots as I possibly can. That is not it. If you're not losing weight, I'm doing it wrong. So I am always on the hunt to figure out how to fucking get the weight off of you but not at your emotional expense, not at the expense of your life, not at the expense of your vacations and holidays and cultural foods, your favorite foods, all your time, not at the expense of your money. It's to always try to figure out how do we do this in a way that your life actually gets better? Not that you're just like, because a lot of you, how many times have you lost weight in your lifetime? Like literally leave me an emoji. If you've lost weight and your life didn't actually get any better, you got thinner. But then when you got there, you were terrified you'd regain your weight. Um, you you didn't like how you look. Like your, your mental image didn't really change. You still talk to yourself like an asshole. You couldn't eat foods you liked. You like, you were on eggshells with everything you did. Okay, I don't teach it that way because you can't live a life like that. That's a prison. And my, I'm not sending you to weight loss jail. You didn't do anything wrong in your life. So we don't need to go there. 
All right, let's grin, try to figure out how to share that screen. Y'all know I'm not the tech one in the group. Oh, poor Corinne. All right, let me know in the chat. Can you see my slides? It should say, did you know? Just give me a yes. Looks like yes, we got some thummies. Okay, great. All right, so the reason I wanted to start off with telling y'all about like this whole idea of like my mission and everything is because throughout a woman's life, the average woman has done 130 fucking diets. Like a lot of us are repeat offenders of the Weight Watchers, repeat offenders of that stupid military diet that got busted out ages ago. A lot of us still try that dumb shit. So I want you to just let that land for a second. What is going on in the world where a woman, 130 diets, that's more than one a year. I mean, that is some bull fucking shit. Something's wrong. So I want you to ask yourself, how many of your whack diets made it impossible to eat like family and friends? I mean, I did a ton of them where I was terrified to go out. I was telling y'all in the earlier coaching session, I actually went and had a tasting nacho thing last night. Had I done a dumb diet back in the day, and let's say that I had made it 16 years, how many diets have you done that said, oh, last minute you could go out and you could taste test tons of nachos. They set you up for that success. Probably not a fucking one. Like no one said me <laughs> because that's not the way diets are designed. They're not designed for our life. And how much time have you wasted in your lifetime trying to work off being bad? We have been taught for decades in magazines, like team no days off. You get like one day where you can have a cheat meal. That's how we get this bastardized relationship that I'm going to overeat and somehow I'm going to go pay penance in the gym to figure this out. Or the next day, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat real healthy and light to make up for that shit. And it never works. If that was a good plan, we'd all be thin. Every one of us would be like, well, here I am. I, I don't even know why I'm on this class because I lost all my weight because every day I work it off from the day before. It doesn't work. And then how much money have you spent on quick fixes just to regain the weight? This is like your shake programs where they take away the food. You do like detoxes. You do all these things where the food gets removed for like a limited time only. And the problem is, is most of us have enough focus and motivation. We have uh, like limited spurts that we can do things. The human brain can be very effective with some really hard shit for short amounts of time, but our brain always has to get relief. And the problem is, is when you do those quick fixes, you didn't practice eating the food you normally eat. So you didn't train yourself to eat any other way than how you were eating before. So you rip off 10 or 15 pounds in three weeks. Then you're like, thank God, I'm going to go out to eat and then I'm going to be good the next day. As if there's this virtuous version of you who suddenly everything clicks and she never overeats and she never wants her favorite foods ever again. No, we have to learn how to live with them and eat them and include them in a way that makes sense. And that takes time, practice and repetition. You don't get that on quick fixes and detoxes. So this is the vicious diet cycle most of us have been trapped in. First, plug in your restrictive diet and you know, Johnny's, I'm gonna kick your ass at 6 a.m. for six weeks boot camp, where you leave every day hobbling and worried that you're the biggest girl in the room. So we do that. And our body is getting overworked with very little food. That puts us in a famine response. The famine response is where your body is like, something's wrong. Something's wrong in the world. Has she traveled to one of those third world countries where there's no food? Because I feel like we're starving. And then it's like, 
alert, alert, alert. When your brain hits famine response, it's supposed to tripwire your brain to do anything and everything it can to survive. This is how our brains are just wired naturally. You come out of the womb with this. This is why, and this is how we all know, give me an emoji if when you were an infant, you cried when you were hungry. <laughs> we all came with a tornado siren in our brain that is supposed to go off when we are too hungry. You know, like a baby will cry when he gets a little hungry, but if a baby gets real fucking hungry, a baby will scream its lungs out and will not stop until someone puts something in its mouth. It is inconsolable. Your, I don't care if you're an infant or if you're 70. Your brain is always going to be on alert for when you are in any kind of an over hunger situation. And its job is to go and go ham on you to get you to eat. And it ham sounds like this. You know, you skipped a meal. You probably are going to have extra room. Just like Susie. When she skips meals all day long, what does her brain do? Sound the alarm. We ain't ate all day. And guess what? We're stressed too. Shit, trying to find a job. We're out of a job. We're in all the danger. So we better eat and we better eat a lot. So then we fall off track. And when we fall off track, it's just like our first person, Deanna, who was like, well, now the second I don't eat on plan, I'm like eating all the things. I'm fucking eating. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. The brain does what it's supposed to do. When you are in a famine, just like the bear knows it's going to sleep in the woods through the winter, the woman knows she better store up some shit because she's likely to do one of those 130 diets that leave her hangry, underfed, cranky, and wishing her life was just done. My mentor always said the funniest thing. She said she used to pray that somebody could put her to sleep for six weeks so she could just lose the weight. She The last like 20, 30 pounds that she needed and she could just wake up thin and start over. My grandmother used to wish for stomach bugs. She always was 10 pounds overweight. She was like, I'm just one really good stomach bug from my goal weight. What does it say about us when we're wishing ill on ourselves? Weight loss. And there's such a better way. So we go into feast response when we're off track. Then talk to ourselves like an asshole. You fucked up. You're never going to lose weight. I told you you were wasting your money. It's one more time. Like our brain now goes into self-loathing because no diet has ever taught us how we're supposed to talk to ourselves after these moments. No diet has ever taught us how we're supposed to break down what happened and check and kind of see where we can start monkeying with things to solve things. So when we talk like an asshole, we usually give up for a few days or a few weeks or a few months. And then when we get an ass full, we hit our rock bottom again when the scale reaches a certain number or we're, or we're out of the pants that we want to be wearing or whatever. Like, I better go back to Pinterest and I need to find me a diet. And we start the vicious diet cycle all over again. This is why women do 130 fucking diets in the course of a lifetime. So at no BS, here's the things I believe. We're not going to restrict you. You've got to unlearn the bullshit diet rules. So many of them are a collection of horseshit that don't even make scientific sense anymore. And yet you keep trying to plug them in and failing. And when you fail, you think there's something wrong with you. It's just like Susie getting a rejection from a job. She makes that mean something's wrong with her instead of next. Instead of, oh, I'm going to find a job. I just got to find the right fit. I just have to keep going. So we're not going to restrict you so that you're not sitting there feeling like the only options you have are to eat your face off. We also don't waste time. 
We do not waste time in no BS. There's no fucking around. There's no dicking around. There's no spending hours in the gym. If you want a food prep, great. If you don't, not one place where you hear me tell you that you have to get your meals pre-packaged and stuff. If you want to do it because it makes your life easier, great. But weight loss should happen in the minutes of the day because most of your weight loss is going to happen in the span of six inches between your ears. What's going on in here is the most valuable amount of time we're going to spend. And I'm going to pump my voice in it. Quick videos. We are going to work on how you talk to yourself. We are going to fix all the shit and shade you throw at yourself every day so that you're not spending tons of time in the kitchen, in the gym. You're spending quick moments telling yourself, I don't talk to myself like this anymore. It's just like what I was talking about with Susie. Susie's not going to overeat if Susie quits making everything mean she's not good enough. And then we're going to save money in OBS. I'm going to tell you right now, I will not be selling you pills. I will not be selling you shakes. I will not be selling you detoxes. You will not be running off to the grocery store and buying tons of food. You ain't going to eat this week anymore. You're not going to have the Sunday, the Sunday purge of I'm going to last supper everything, eat my face off of all the good stuff, go to the grocery store, you know, deck my fridge out. And it looks like Martha Stewart brought her garden in and organized it for me. And then by Wednesday, I'm throwing all the food out because it went bad because I didn't want that shit. I was never going to eat it anyway. So we're going to save money that way. Here's what we think weight loss should look like. Doable hunger. No calorie counting, no starving. You should be able to eat to enough. You should feel really safe when you end your meal. You've had plenty to where you're not anxiety and worrying you're going to get hungry. When we combine doable hunger with having that 24-hour plan, like I talked about in the first call, where we are making a plan for the tired-ass version of us, the guilty mom version of us, the mom who's like stressed out that, She's working all day and not spending enough time with her kids because she's got laundry and homework and food to cook. We're going to be making a plan for the empty nester who used to have all of that responsibility. And now she doesn't. And she's alone. And she's missing her kids. And she's trying to figure out how to fill her evenings for the first time because her kids were her life. So we're gonna plan for her. When you take doable hunger and you plan that way, you start losing weight. But as you start that, here's what you start realizing. There are basic human needs I'm not meeting. Sometimes it's water, sometimes it's rest. But often the basic human needs that never get talked about in diets have to do with are you, do you have any hobbies? Do you take time off? Do you have people that can help you? Do you ask for help? Can you rest without guilt? Can you put yourself out into the world to make friends after 20 years of all of your friends being your kids' friends and their parents? Most of us, we don't realize what's missing in our life until we're doing doable hunger in the 24 hour plan. At no BS, we don't believe you should willpower through all of that. We believe that weight loss helps you see the life you have and then figure out the life you want. And we teach you how to create that. So when we do that, motivation starts kicking in. You're starting to feel cared for. Your weight's coming down. You're eating foods you like. You're starting to feel in control of food, maybe for the first time in your life. Then as that motivation builds, we start level up. We start tweaking. We start thinking about, well, what else could I do? Maybe there are other things I'd like to try. Maybe there are these new things. And then that's when momentum happens. And that's our cycle. We just keep doing it. Rinse and repeat, just like with Deanna. All I did with Deanna is go straight back to the basics. She realized that she's 10 pounds from losing 100. 
And the only thing that was really standing in her way was thinking it was going to be hard. And she needed some motivation. She needed some self-talk. She needed a basic human need met, which is, this might not be as hard as I think. I don't have to fuck the day up over eating off plan when I can save my day. So we try to make weight loss as easy as possible for you. We have personalized weight loss support. I'm going to tell you right now. I got Coach Lisa in the QA asking questions. I got a coach over here in the chat answering questions. I have members that support each other all day, every day, and are private, no drama, no bullshit Facebook group. We have a place on the website called Ask Coaches where you have, it's like coach in a pocket. 24-7, you can ask a question in 24 to 48 hours. One of them will have answered it. No matter what you need to talk about. I don't care if you need to talk about your plan or if you need to talk about uh, your kids and them driving you fucking crazy and you feeling like a terrible mom because you just, you want to give them away today. Or you're a grandmother who is sitting there and you definitely think them babies should be raised a whole different way. What did I do? Why is my son letting this shit happen with my grandbabies? We coach on everything, y'all. Because this is the shit we eat over. So if we're not addressing the shit, no diet will ever work. So here's just a few things our people say. First week. I went from 222.4 to 219.8. I didn't expect the weight to continue to fall off, but it's motivating. Finished my first week two pounds down, and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. First nine days, down three pounds. Whoop. At the end of my first week, lost 2.5. Thrilled with her results. I've learned so much in just seven days. She even had this chick, Courtney, she even had a, chi a kid go to the ER, started her period during that week, and then made it through most of her kids' spring break and still lost two and a half pounds. First of all, Courtney, you deserve a round of applause. Y'all should like actually give her some love in there because that's a staunch result. All right. So we're not going to start off with a bang and falling off track anymore. I'm a big believer in teaching you this one thing. You're going to join and it's going to feel exciting. The moment you click and be like, Whoop. and then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, what have I done? And some of you are going to nervously, like literally handshaking. I've had so many people write in and say, when I hit join, I just started crying because they were so scared they needed the emotional release. And they came in and they were well cared for. We are not like most programs. You are not going to be left alone in the, like I love to say it, but naked and afraid in the cold. We are going to be walking with you. So within your first 30 days, we encourage every brand new member to get on what we call a small group call with a coach. Where we ask everybody, what help do you actually need? And let me just talk to you and point you in the right direction. You don't have to take it, but it's there for you. Because I know how it's like to lose weight. That first 30 days is fucking crazy. You're all over the place. And you don't know if you're gonna need help or not. For all of our other members, we have group calls all the time. We have that Ask Coaches. We have so many ways for people to raise their hand and say, I need a human to help me. And you will get it. Uh, the No BS Weight Loss course is the first thing you're going to do. You're going to learn directly from me in the course at the pace that makes sense for you what to do. I periodically take the membership through it again. Our members, this last month, we've been pounding the first module They've been doing watch parties with me on Wednesday where we were watching the videos and then I am going deeper into them live, answering questions live. We literally want to be with you every step of the way. Ask any of them. 
So what we do is we try to take some behavior based stuff and combine it with some of that psychology. Because if you don't combine habit change, which is mostly diets with some psychology, it's very hard for those changes to stick for your lifetime. And I want you to lose weight for good, not for this time. No more this time diets. No more just losing weight. You deserve to lose it for the last damn time. And then we're going to stay on track without counting points or macros. We give you our planner. We give it to you um, in a PDF form where you can fill it out on a digital device if you like. We also, you can download it and print it yourself. And then we also give you directions if you want to order it just cheap from FedEx and have it spiralized because a lot of you are kind of more like a paper-based person. We give you all the directions to do that. But it's the custom planner we wrote that takes you through the basics and everything you're going to need to lose weight. Plus, you're going to get access to our weight loss coaches for support. That's that ask coaches feature where you ask a question, you get it answered. It's all anonymous, but you can read everybody's questions. A lot of people say it's like weight loss gold. They're like, oh my God, that's like the weight loss Google. It's the best Google ever because it's real people asking real questions, getting a real human response over and over and over again. And then each week we have several live group coaching calls. You are on one right now. This is what we do every Sunday. And then we have an accountability partner matching service. So when you sign up, you can request a group. Like here's one of our um, groups. They all meet up. A lot of our accountability groups meet up. A lot of our accounting groups, they end up becoming best friends. They're best weight loss friends and stuff. If you are in an accountability group, Give us some love in the chat. Give us some love in the emojis. If you even have a clever name, feel free to let us know what your clever name is. <laughs> but we match you and we will match you over and over again. And we will teach you how to be an accountability group. Yesterday, we actually had a live call for anyone who was in no BS who was like, you know, not really jiving with my group, but I don't know how to break up with them. We actually taught everybody yesterday how to have a graceful exit from your accountability group so you can try another one on. Here's my theory on support when it comes to weight loss. It's like finding the right pair of shoes. You know when shoes don't fit well and you don't want to be trying to go on a long walk in a pair of shoes that are rubbing a fucking blister on your heel. We want you to have the right fit so you can do your entire weight loss journey blister free. And then plus, you're going to just have the whole community of women who are going to help you stick with your plan all the way down the scale. So we have a lot of subgroups. We try to, we have our major Facebook group that's private. No one is going to know you're in there. It will not be on your timeline. No one will know you're a member because we keep it private. We have 55 plus. We have a special diets group for all of it. Like we have a lot of members who are diabetic, who are doing different, like they have to do very special diets for their medical conditions. We also have the mastering maintenance group. We have so many people who lose all their weight. We have a whole maintenance program. We have a maintenance group. They get coaching calls because maintenance is a whole different animal. So if you want to join, you go to joinnobs.com. It's 59 months, $59 a month. You can cancel at any time. You get that success call with a no BS coach within your first 30 days. You get the course. You get the planner. You get access to our coaches 24-7. You get weekly group training and coaching calls. You get a private member podcast where all of it's right there. And you can listen on demand as much or as little as you want. But one thing I can promise you is that you will never, ever not be able to find the answer you need to overcome the next step. And then you'll get the accountability partner matching service. So if you're thinking, I don't know if this is a good time. I don't know if I want to spend the money. I have to try this on my own first. Waiting for the perfect moment, that's a myth. I'd much rather, like a lot of you are using the holidays already. It's like, there, bitch, there's over a hundred days left before the end of the year. And a lot of people are saying like, the holidays are coming. It's like, 
So you want to spend a third of your life every, like a third of every year of your life giving up on your weight loss and wonder, I wonder why we got to do 130 diets. I wonder why I can't keep my weight off. Because you should be able to fucking lose weight, maintain weight, and eat what you like during the holidays. Wouldn't it be way better to go into the holidays being like, I know how to do it this year. I don't have to just be like, fuck, I'll start over January 1 and then hate your life on January 1 because for three months you ate like an asshole. Jeez, we all do that to ourselves. And let me just tell you, weight loss with no BS isn't expensive. You know what's expensive? Eating more than you fucking need. That's called expensive. So Holly started last week and she was like, my damn grocery bill is already starting to go down. They're, her whole family's eating a little less. But she says, I'm not even trying to create the perfect meal plan. I'm just making it doable. She said, I wasted so much money trying to follow a certain way of eating with those 130 diet attempts that by the end of the week, the food was going bad. Then Becky said, it's so expensive to eat healthy was always her excuse. She said, I used to spend over $200 at the grocery store and we would eat out multiple times. And now I'm down to $150 a week and we're eating out just once a week now. Who else has seen their grocery bill go down? So if you're in no BS and you've seen your grocery bill go down, I tell you what, in the chat, if you've gotten off meds, Will you please, because that's the other unspoken hero of no BS. So many of our people get off their medications. If you got off your meds, please list which meds you've gotten off of since you've joined. And if your grocery bill has gone down, I want you to leave the emoji. I want you to do the reaction. So meds and just my grocery bills are going down. So going at weight loss alone is also like gambling that you're going to get exactly what you need every Friday in my podcast. A lot of people say like, well, what is the difference between no BS and the podcast? I mean, Corinne, you're so, you're so fabulous on that 20, 30 minutes I get every week. I am fabulous for 20 or 30 minutes. What if you had fabulous every day? What if you had fabulous all the time? We have what's called a quick hits podcast just for our members where we take some of the best and shortest little things that have happened each week and we give them that because we have a lot of people who are like i ain't got fucking time to listen to you rail off for two hours on a sunday korean here's what i got time for give me like 15 minutes of ass kicking that's what i got time for i'm gonna make my plan i'm gonna get my ass kicked every day that quick hits is full of 20 minutes or less answers ass kicking motivation and exactly what you need when you need it so Sarah, who's lost a hundred pounds, said she had yo-yo dotted. Is Sarah even here? It'd be great if she was. <laughs> the coaching felt like magic. I was able to clean up areas in my life where I felt stuck. The NOBS staff and Corinne have provided us with everything we need to lose our weight. We have another one, Christina. She was 338 pounds, depressed as fucked, overwhelmed, stressed, sleep deprived because she was working two jobs and she's a caregiver for her mother. She said she was literally near death. She had diabetes, blood pressure, and felt hopeless and had given up on herself. Here's fucking Christina now. She's down a hundred pounds. She said, despite her excuses, remember how I've been talking about, we don't get rid of our excuses. We get aware of them. And then we tell them, I knew you were going to come. And I'm going to lose weight with you because I'm also going to think these things. She thought she couldn't lose weight because she didn't have people to work out with. She had a tight budget and all that other shit. But with no BS, my body was changing and my thoughts were changing. I started with very small lifestyle changes. No BS doesn't require exercise, shakes, or gimmicks. All the excuses slowly but surely stopped mattering to me. That's the magic. So again, you can join at joinnobs.com and just remember it's about a buck 90 a day. I know not all of you got a dollar 90 a day, but most of us are overeating in some form of fashion, a dollar and 90 cents every day. Some of us, it's in a latte. Some of us, it's a snack. 
It's a last minute pit stop at McDonald's. It's ordering pizza. For a lot of us, let me tell you where the biggest one is. When you're eating dinner and you don't stop it enough, how is your grocery bill ever going to go down? Most of us eat an extra $2 of food every day from emotional eating. And when you clean that up, you're going to have to buy less food at the grocery store. But how will you ever buy, spend less money on food if you never know how to eat a little bit less with your emotions? All right, one, that is it. If you are wanting to join, do it now. This is a good example of what we do. We talk about the real shit. This is the stuff we cannot do in the podcast. This is not shit that's going to happen in that. This is what makes us different. Support, help, addressing real issues. Join nobs.com. Hope to see you on the inside. And I will be live Wednesday with all of you for Q&A. I think I'm live. It's either me or Coach MJ this week. I can't remember, but I'm I'm going to be around. Don't worry. <laughs> Bye, y'all.